this may be the end of the uh, conference, but this is uh, not by any means the uh, end <laughs> of uh, uh, the uh, uh, initiative or the, even the beginning of the end for our initiative, Historians Without Borders. This is only, we hope, the beginning uh, of the beginning. And uh, <coughs> uh, there is going around a paper with the, a very short agenda for this meeting uh, with the headlines uh, for the agenda, beginning with uh, a summary, uh, telling you about the summary for the uh, conference. Um, a summary uh, of this uh, conference and all the conference sessions, proceedings and discussions, including all the workshops, uh, will be sent out to all participants uh, uh, within two weeks with the moderators uh, and uh, the uh, assigned rapporteurs uh, from each session uh, editing the reports. And they will include a summary of the introductory speeches or full texts if they are available. And those who do have them, uh, please uh, see to it that uh, we also uh, get them. But they will not be uh, full verbatim reports of the whole discussions. And we uh, hope that they will particularly concentrate uh, on any proposals uh, and ideas for ways uh, in which uh, the network could engage and should engage in future work also on those issues which were uh, discussed uh, uh, in those um, uh, dis uh, workshops and, and also here in the plenaries. And we will also uh, send out a concise uh, report about uh, conference uh, co coverage uh, and comments uh, on the conference uh, which we, uh, in the media, uh, in Finland and international media, if we um, get any uh, information on that. And therefore, you are all uh, asked uh, to send the secretariat, so that is, send us, uh, the Historians Without Borders, dot fi address, uh, uh, any links to any media items uh, uh, from your home countries or elsewhere on this initiative and the conference. Uh, and as I said, we hope to have this full conference report uh, uh, sent out uh, within uh, two weeks. As this has been a very open conference and we want this to be a very open initiative, when you receive the reports, uh, you are of course uh, uh, free to and even encouraged to uh, send them out uh, to any uh, people uh, you think uh, could be uh, interested in them. Uh, and at this stage I ask, are there any questions uh, concerning the reports from uh, our conference? If not, then we move on to the uh, main item uh, of uh, this final session, namely the proposal to establish uh, a network of historians without borders. Uh, you have all uh, received the draft declaration that has been, uh, that is to be found among the conference papers. Uh, and this declaration is also meant to be so to speak, the founding uh, charter of the uh, network. <coughs> and the network will be open to any and all historians uh, uh, who are ready to sign the declaration. Uh, and uh, of course, all of your participants uh, are welcome to sign after it has been adopted uh, here, but anyone can also uh, join later. Uh, although it is mostly addressed to historians, and, but we have to interpret historians also in a rather broad understanding, not only those who are, have university positions as professional historians, but others who have a, a, an experience of historical issues uh, and uh, are interested in history and knowledge are also uh, welcome to uh, join. Uh, and uh, who fit in in the category of uh, historians. I'm, I'm one of those, by the way, myself, because I have never uh, been employed as a historian as such, <laughs> but, I, but I, I have this adjunct professorship here at the university, and I, I have been uh, involved in, in many history uh, projects on, on history, uh, geography, and so on. 
Uh, <coughs> the network we are aiming uh, to uh, create today will not be an organization. It will consist uh, of all those uh, individual historians who wish to join and sign uh, the declaration. Uh, <coughs> and uh, this does not rule out uh, the for establishment of an organization later on. Uh, but uh, at present, uh, as we see it, uh, it will, for the foreseeable uh, time continue as a and start out as a network. But I would also add that uh, the signatories to the declaration are uh, encouraged uh, to promote the aims of the network uh, in their countries and in their own international contacts. And if others uh, feel it, it can be helpful and useful to organize themselves in a suitable fashion like we have done in Finland when we established the Historians Without Borders uh, in Finland, uh, so that they can also engage as collective actors in furthering the aims of the network. Uh, but as this uh, will not be an organization, at least initially, until a, another decision, perhaps in the future, will be taken, this means that this is not a judicial uh, person either, and it cannot enter into binding agreements or financial arrangements, etc. And therefore, we uh, propose that uh, we accept the offer of Historians Without uh, Borders in Finland as a registered NGO uh, in Finland to act as the Secretariat and, where necessary, to uh, sort of act as a judicial person uh, taking uh, care of the uh, 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 work for the uh, network. Uh, and we are also proposing that this network should have a coordinating committee uh, consisting something in the order of uh, six, perhaps up to nine members who should be uh, nominated, elected at the end of uh, uh, this uh, session uh, so to take forward the work of the network and to uh, <coughs> illustrate what, uh, uh, we, how we see uh, the network uh, working. Uh, I would uh, say that the coordinating committee's uh, task should be, one, to continue work on the initiative with the aim of calling an international meeting open to all signatories of the declaration, that is a meeting of the network, uh, within a year or so to review progress and take decisions uh, on further developing the work of the network. The Coordinating Committee should develop the ideas and proposals that have come out of this conference uh, and the uh, workshop and also with the uh, input uh, that we will hopefully receive from many of you directly uh, uh, through email and other uh, contacts. The committee uh, should open an internal, internal website uh, for the signatories, which will be used to report on and discuss uh, all the activities uh, uh, that uh, uh, the committee uh, will undertake. It will disseminate proposals, views and reports from the signatories. The committee should engage with historians, diplomats and other international actors in promoting the aims of the network. As a concrete uh, uh, proposal, uh, we see that uh, the, the committee uh, should establish a roster of historians uh, who have signed on to the declaration uh, and the network uh, and where those not automatically, but those who wish to uh, have their names put forward on such a ro roster, identifying their specific fields of research, knowledge, experience uh, and interest, uh, and who would be, in principle, ready to be called on to serve as members uh, or as experts for historical uh, committees, uh, commissions, working groups, 
and the like that um, international organizations, uh, governments uh, or independent actors uh, uh, may wish to establish uh, in uh, 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 signing on to the, and uh, which are in line with the aims of the network uh, as set out in the declaration, draft declaration. Uh, and uh, we will return to the declaration in a minute. And the committee should, of course, uh, start working on independent sources of funding for the network. Uh, this conference has been uh, arranged with a generous donation from the uh, Janne Anato Serko Foundation in Finland, uh, and we have received also smaller uh, donations for two, from two Finnish foundations. Um, so we do not receive any government uh, subsidies, nor are we seeking uh, to receive, although uh, we are very grateful for the good cooperation we have uh, with the uh, Ministry for Foreign Affairs here in uh, Finland, which has also helped uh, in, in many ways uh, in uh, our preparations for this uh, uh, conference. But uh, if we are establishing an international network, we are also looking at uh, all available possibilities for international funding. And here, of course, any uh, ideas, proposals on whom to approach uh, would be uh, very welcome. We have some ideas uh, ourselves uh, 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 on, on this, but uh, this is a necessity for us to be able to do any meaningful work in the future. We have enough funding to keep this Finnish NGO going for some time. Uh, but uh, taking responsibility for an international network will require uh, hopefully also some stable core funding um, in, in the future. Uh, and we, of course, recognize that most uh, uh, institutions who, who are funding such project, such uh, organization will tend to prefer uh, to fund project, uh, uh, projects rather than uh, core funding. Uh, but uh, I just want to... Uh, all of you to keep this in mind and please let us know of any ideas which uh, uh, could be of help in this respect. So uh, <clears throat> the draft declaration uh, which has been, uh, which you have, I hope all of you in front of you, um, we have received some comments uh, prior to this uh, session on it and some uh, concrete proposals uh, uh, and I expect that there might be more comments also, but I will begin by uh, saying that one uh, proposal has been that um, in uh, the uh, <coughs> in the uh, paragraph uh, where we uh, say that uh, this. Uh, uh, will uh, uh, will uh, promote uh, will uh, let me see yes in the end of the page the network will establish a roster of historians etc and other working in groups and other for in aid of confidence building mediation and conflict resolution it has been proposed uh, uh, that it should read in aid of uh, uh, promoting a culture of peace confidence building, mediation, and uh, conflict resolution. So the proposal is that uh, that should be added uh, in promoting a culture of peace. Uh, I'm very comfortable with this proposal myself, and I don't see any ob ob objections to taking it uh, on board. Uh, and then I have also received uh, uh, indications that we should also uh, be at least in one way or another uh, refer to the way that history is taught and the textbooks used for history teaching so that they also uh, reflect the uh, aims and principles uh, set out in the uh, declaration. Uh, and this, I think, could be uh, incorporated into the uh, declaration where we have meeting at, uh, in Helsinki at this conference uh, and these uh, uh, five uh, uh, lines add one uh, saying uh, in working together in order uh, to promote the teaching of history 
in the spirit of this declaration. So I'm personally very comfortable with this idea and uh, would incorporate it. In. But I will now open the floor for discussion uh, on the uh, proposal uh, of, for establishing the network and uh, very concretely on the uh, draft declaration. And if you have any uh, amendments you wish to propose, I would very much appreciate it, getting them in uh, writing. So please, the floor is uh, open. Yes, and please, that is Christina Toomey, but please uh, uh, identify yourselves uh, when you take the floor. Thank you, My, is it turned on? Yes. My name's Christina Toomey from Monash University in Australia. I just wondered, given uh, the discussion we had in the session this morning around um, violence against women, and particularly in light of Resolution 1325 of the UN, whether we shouldn't incorporate in the draft declaration something about incorporating an understanding of the role of women and gender perspectives in efforts to build peace and resolve conflict. So some kind of specific mention in the draft declaration of issues to do with women and, and gender. Well, I'm personally very comfortable with that idea. That certainly uh, is in line of uh, how, how we would want to work. But I would appreciate if you could formulate this uh, uh, in writing and send it to us, it will be easy. To, but meanwhile, uh, other interventions So, do you, do you have it, uh, any proposal in writing? <laughs> yes. Just a minute. Tuomo Melanson from the University of Tampere. I just wonder if we need a paragraph saying that we should somehow take care and protect the historians under under any kind of persecution. Sorry, can you repeat it? <laughs> I, I just wonder if we need a paragraph uh, saying something that we want to protect and take care of the historians under persecution. Um, well, um, I think this comes automatically for anybody who signs on to this declaration, but perhaps it is a bit too pointing out uh, because we, we wouldn't want to, to see any historians being persecuted anywhere, but if that happens, I'm sure that our network will want to react to that. Yeah. Well, do I... Can I uh, interpret uh, uh, this uh, situation now that we are ready to take a decision on establishing a network of historians without uh, borders? This is the uh, case. And uh, uh, for the draft declaration, we um, had the two proposals that came from, from participants uh, and which I indicated, namely to uh, have an additional line uh, saying uh, uh, to promote uh, the uh, <coughs> teaching of history in the spirit of this declaration and also to include at the end of the page uh, uh, for uh, in aid of uh, promoting a culture of peace that these uh, two amendments uh, are uh, can be adopted and uh, i'm still waiting for christina if you can come up with a uh, some concrete uh, uh, formula Uh, could, well, uh, Romila, please. Um, I was going to suggest that, you know, um, there are some organizations like this, but first of all, it's necessary to tie up with them. By that, I don't mean that you interact with these organizations. I mean, there's one that I am a member of, which is um, 
um, Concerned Historians, Network for Concerned Historians, which is run by someone called Antun de Beit. Now, all we need to do is to inform them that this organization also exists and have a kind of website where all these organizations are listed so that persecuted historians can write to these organizations. The second thing I wanted to suggest was that perhaps this organization could be a kind of clearinghouse where if I'm coming from a society where there is a controversial uh, discussion of history which is leading to serious uh, political consequences, I could write into the clearinghouse and say, this is my fear, this is what is happening. And you could then inquire as to whether this claim is correct or not. And if the claim is correct, then a certain amount of international pressure can be brought to somehow salvage those historians that are being persecuted. You know, it, it needs some kind of input and output organization, which I think could be performed by a group like this. Well, what I said about uh, setting up a uh, internal uh, web page for uh, dissemination of uh, information and uh, discussion among the, uh, the signatories would entail precisely also uh, this, this kind of work. And as for the other organizations uh, which we know exist and have some sort of similar aims, um, some are more uh, international, some may be regional, some national. We have already tried to approach them as, as far as we know, have heard of them, uh, also setting out, uh, sending out quite a lot of invitations uh, to such organizations uh, uh, to this conference. Uh, most have not responded, some have responded, but we will keep on uh, informing them because they are natural partners for our network. And, it, and of course, we would very much also appreciate that if you have knowledge uh, and the contact uh, addresses for such organizations, uh, please uh, uh, let us know immediately so we can uh, send out the information. And this, of course, applies to anyone and everyone you think. We have sent out, I would say, how many? Perhaps up to a thousand invitations to this uh, conference and also said that everyone is free to distribute it to others as well. And this, of course, still continues. So uh, please uh, uh, send uh, both us, but also you can directly uh, resend uh, 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 to others uh, who you think could be interested in joining the network and, and then they can uh, uh, take contact with us and, and uh, uh, sign on uh, to the principles. Uh, so, as I said, I'm still waiting for Christina. Go. Could you? Do you have, we have it. Did you send it by email? Yes, uh, the proposal is uh, from Christina, is uh, uh, an additional suggestion, incorporate an understanding of the role of women and gender perspectives in efforts to build peace and resolve conflicts. Uh, and uh, I think this can be incorporated uh, into the point where we have these uh, uh, separate lines after meeting in Helsinki, etc., in the form of uh, 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 working together in order to uh, Incorporate, yes, actually it goes uh, as such uh, than that. Please, and, and wait for the microphone. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, but I, I, I hope you don't mind. I am not an historian and I'm just a press, but I, I have a right for an opinion or a question. Uh, this is a very, a very good thing internationally. I am a member of the Journalist Without Borders because that's what I am. But uh, now I would ask this uh, for countries under development or in the way of development as they are called, 
Let's take Albania, where I am from. I hope the board will consider, because you should have some member fee, membership fee. Would you consider now not to kill these guys? Because no one has 100 euros in Albania to pay a fee. Uh, a bit less or something. And for other countries too. Thank you. We are aware of this and uh, we had the possibility to help some participants from outside Europe uh, uh, in, in their travel costs uh, for attending this uh, conference and every, anyone could also approach up with such a, such a wish. Uh, and when you mentioned Journalists Without uh, Borders, uh, uh, we approached uh, actually almost every organization with, with, with the uh, words Without Borders including uh, Doctor Médecins Sans Frontières, Journalists Without Borders, uh, 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 Human Rights Without Borders, uh, and also inviting them to uh, attend the uh, conference. Uh, so we are without borders uh, uh, in regard to other professions as well. Please. Hello? Yeah. Hello, uh, I'm Carolina, a uh, Mexican uh, representing Euroclio, which is the European Association of History Educators. As you can see, it's not only about Europe, because I'm Mexican. And we are kind of concerned about uh, teaching history. We are talking always about historians or research, but at the end, the dissemination of all, of all this knowledge go through uh, classrooms. And in classrooms, you can see also a lot of abuse or misuse of history. So we, we would like to know if there is something like more specific uh, that Historians Without Borders we can do about education. Thank you. Well, that will be, should be a very important part of our, our future work. And indeed, we just uh, agreed on to, uh, to uh, add uh, as one of the uh, aims of this uh, network uh, to promote the promoting the teaching of history in the spirit of this declaration. And Eurocleo has been, and uh, already we have been in contact uh, with the organization, and we are very happy to see you uh, here also at this uh, conference. Please. Uh, Jukka Kort, University of Helsinki. Uh, as a media historian, I would like to propose that Probably this is somehow a taking for granted issue, but I would like to uh, at least hear your comments about the proposal that to take into consideration what kind of a role media has in, in, in a history. Uh, not only uh, in, in such things uh, as propaganda or censorship, but also in, in history culture or public history in general. So should be there something about that, that what role the historians has in, in media and in public history? Thank you. I think that is certainly a very pertinent uh, uh, question. Uh, the problem is that uh, if we start listing out all the uh, spheres where we need to work on, uh, the list will be rather long and inevitably we'll, we will exclude uh, someone uh, and some, uh, some sphere uh, inadvertently, uh, which is not the meaning. So um, if, unless you have a concrete proposal, I, I, I would think that uh, uh, this is certainly, when we are talking about general and comprehensive knowledge, for example, this uh, is certainly something which uh, covers the way the media works uh, on historical issues. But unless there are, yes, please. Uh, thank you. It's a, it's a very interesting conference. Actually, uh, I'd like to propose uh, we have the part uh, stressing the importance of open and free access to the historical material and the archives. Being the archivist, Dmitry Farlov, National Archives of Finland, I do, I do, I do think it's very interesting to, or very important to stress to protect not only, uh, protect also the archival materials and the archives, because archives are suffered greatly during the conflicts and uh, wars. Well, 
as I would read it, this uh, access to historical material and archives covers that as well, obviously. Yes? Uh, Tom Wolf from the University of Minnesota. I think the language here is m almost totally transparent and clear except for one phrase, which is the phrase underlining that a cultured approach to historical monuments. What do you mean by cultured? This is, this is a word that has sort of, it's ambiguous and it's loaded in some way, somebody that's cultured versus somebody that's not cultured. So maybe there's a cinnamon, synonym that could be used there? Well, uh, interpreting individual words uh, will also uh, will open up a huge amount of possibilities. So if I were to suggest some other wording, it would be a uh, civilized approach. But then one could ask, what do you mean by civilized? Is as opposed to barbaric or what? So. <laughs> Uh, if, if we feel comfortable with the idea as such, I, I've, but I'm open again here if you have any, uh, any uh, concrete uh, uh, proposals on that. But it is uh, a cultured approach, at least as I would understand it, would mean that it has to be an understanding uh, uh, approach uh, uh, that uh, history is there, uh, whether we like it or not, and we cannot eliminate it by eliminating concrete artifacts uh, and so on. So that would be, in my reading at least, what I would understand by a cultured approach. Please. Hello, I'm uh, Fanny Johansson. I'm a PhD student, PhD candidate at Helsinki University. And just looking around this room and, and these two days, it's been an amazing conference. I've, I've been really inspired, but uh, I have noticed that there's a, a distinct lack of young people <laughs> and uh, starting off academics. So I would suggest, I would propose that we would add something about promoting the, the work of young academics in this, um, within Historians Without Borders. And my suggestion for the wording would be uh, promoting the participation of young academics in the activities of the network. I have an open mind, but I would expect others also to react to the, does this really uh, add? Because again, <laughs> we, we added gender, and I think that is quite clear that that should be there. Uh, but uh, do, we, do we take on the age aspects? Uh, what other aspects do we take on? Uh, uh, because I, I, I would underline that we are in for a very universal approach. But Christina, please. I agree with the suggestion that saying a cultured approach is, is problematic. Um, I'm not sure what the alternative word may be, perhaps careful or something that was less productive. Productive is good. Um, but I wondered if other people had a view about that particular uh, clause because I understand that the whole issue of monuments and flags and statuary is, is quite a controversial one at the moment. And I'm just putting that out there to see if anybody else has a view about that particular issue. This is a good question because uh, apart from you, some others also have beforehand raised this uh, and uh, I think we are all aware of the sensitivities involved uh, and uh, I wouldn't go further than this, uh, what, what is said on that, uh, because one can have very different views and interpretations of what it is. Flags are something which you, have, you can raise every morning and take down every evening, so well, that's not a permanent picture of that. But when it comes to statues and monuments, I would say that the uh, self-evident example I use is that nobody uh, advocates the uh, dismantling of uh, the Colosseum in Rome because uh, Christians and others were persecuted there uh, 15 centuries ago uh, or something like that. So that's part of history. Uh, but uh, uh, I wouldn't 
uh, this is a very personal opinion. Uh, I would say that I understand that uh, uh, if that you if people will want to destroy and take down 90% uh, of the Lenin statues in many countries, and maybe 98% of the Stalin statues. But uh, I would understand if somebody was to say, well, let's leave at least 5% of these as, as a reminder of the history. <laughs> Christina, please. <laughs> but would a member of the network, for example, um, argue that we should retain a statue of Hitler somewhere? Well, that's not a problem because I don't know <laughs> any Hitler statues existing any longer. I know, but hypothetically, <laughs> you know. Anja. Yes, I, Anja Nevalinen, University of Helsinki. I, I find it slightly disturbing to take on individual concepts and, and start dissecting them in terms of, of what... what in each cultural context that we represent here, what they might mean, we will end up being confused. And I, I would suggest, I would prefer to be more, more um, short. Leave out all the, the definitions about women, because women are not the only group which are treated badly. There, there are people who are poor who are treated badly. There are uh, people who are coming from other countries who, who have lost their homes who are treated badly. And I think it would be much simpler not to, not to start talking about individual concepts, but rather try to keep the goal, the, the idea of working together towards something. That would be my point. Well, um May I now suggest that concerning this particular paragraph uh, that which says that uh, should leave an environment where, where traces, uh, and a trace is not leaving everything in place, it's, it is that just exactly that, a trace, and does not take any view on, on, on what kind of, uh, where we draw the lines or anything. Uh, and maybe instead of a cultured, could we have the word underlining that an understanding approach to historical monuments. Would we be more comfortable with that? Please. Yes, can you repeat? I, I, I mean, it's, it's quite convoluted. I think you just have underlining that our approach to historical monuments should leave an environment, etc. And then well, it's inclusive. I, I'm happy with that. If, if everybody can, can take that. Vijaya. Sorry, the acoustics are such that you need a microphone. Uh, just suggesting the word sensitized. 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 Yeah. It's more neutral and it's yes. not so loaded. Well, I could, I'm happy with that word as well. If, if there is a consensus for sensitized, Emilia. Uh, could I suggest that we would keep the original wording here? I'm uh, Emilia Pallon and I've been working on memorials and uh, street names, etc., for most part of my academic life, I guess. So, um, for instance, in Hungary, this word, current wording, under, uh, cultural approach, would mean that they are very much allowed to continue their culture of changing those statues and, and memorials, for instance. So, these are ambiguous enough to provide a starting point for trying to understand what was, what we, what we are dealing with at the moment. Yeah. So. Uh, that's why I would keep the original wording. I would definitely not take the our approach because who knows who, who is we. It's uh, impossible to define. It's uh, um, yes, but when pe more people are joining, I mean, the we is always changing. So in that sense, I would suggest that we either keep this current one or then we s start reconsidering the whole wording altogether. Um, at least it provides basis for debate. All right, may I ask you, uh, would you be 
able to accept this sensitive, uh, sensitized approach. I think understanding perhaps, uh, perhaps the best one of all, all these suggestions was, was this understanding, because there people are starting to reflect on what they are actually, um, what other people are calling to be removed. And this was discussed already uh, in the keynote today, that we should reflect on what are the public calls for which type of uh, history and memory and narratives. So perhaps reflective or understanding. Yes. Well, Christina. An alternative might be just to get rid of that clause altogether. Which doesn't mean that we necessarily agree with pulling all monuments down, but it doesn't mean that we're going to agree to keeping a certain sort of specified number in place. Like, why is it, Im why is it important to have that uh, clause well, there? Well, uh, the point is not really about uh, statues as such or... If uh, much less individual statues. I think the point is uh, leaving traces of all our history. Uh, that, that is the, the, really the central wording, wording or central meaning or idea behind this uh, proposal. History is also uh, about change as, as you will appreciate, uh, we, we have some experience in diplomacy as well, so we have been trying to engage in uh, uh, a deliberate uh, 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 ambiguity which, uh, and find an uh, ambiguous enough wording which will suit everyone's taste. So I, let me test now. Um, would we be, be able to not to object to the word understanding? So if I don't see any objections, I think that this could be adopted by consensus then, okay. Right, uh, and then also, yes. Because now, I'm sorry, I'm intervening, but uh, uh, because uh, Christina, our dear Australian friend here, she, she just said that we have, we omit it all. We can't omit it all because the Taliban are, are destroying the, the remnants or the cultural monuments of uh, wherever they are now in Afghanistan and those in your Jordania were destroyed. They are a uh, monumental uh, heritage of the whole humankind. So we can't leave it out. We no, have I, to I preserve. We, I but just, but just a moment, Erke. If we, if we take like this, may I? Yeah. Underlining uh, that we are going to fight for the historical monuments. Yeah. Leave now culture and so on, because it is also scientific. It is also historical and anyway. Just but, two but, words. But, but this is Thank a, you. A, a bygone issue. We, yeah. we had a consensus on, on leaving it with the word understanding. So any other still? Yes, please. Just wait a minute for the mic. Thank you. My name is Oleg Filaev. I'm my counsel of the Russian embassy. Uh, history is a very dangerous weapon. You must agree with me. Uh, yes, just today, uh, as a panel uh, concerning the relations between Turkey and Armenia, it was proved once more. So I um, su uh, suggest that in uh, the declaration, uh, there must be words that no result of uh, the historians without borders the result of the work of the historians can be uh, considered to be a legal argument in any international dispute. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't think we really need anything like that uh, in this because that's self-evident. And anyway, uh, I think most of us are on record has been uh, very critical of uh, any legislators or parliaments passing resolution or legislation on historical issues. So, 
unless there are others, I find that the declaration with the uh, w wording uh, which we have gone through uh, on four points uh, is uh, now adopted. And I think we can have a round of applause. So, thank you. And, by the way, we will uh, uh, distribute a paper there where everybody can uh, physically assign uh, uh, on to the, uh, to the declaration. And, of course, we will see to it as soon as possible uh, that you will, find, uh, you will have the uh, now adopted uh, uh, amendments included in the declaration you take home with you. But those who wish to sign physically now uh, are free to do so, and I'm very happy to use the opportunity to be the first one to do so. <laughs> Okay, now let's move on to the uh, next point, which is the uh, election of, the, uh, of a coordinating committee. Uh, it's evident that we need some sort of uh, coordinating committee uh, to continue work on the basis of uh, what has just been uh, discussed and, and proposed. Uh, and uh, uh, I have been in touch with uh, some people because uh, uh, we could not come to the uh, meeting without having anyone that we have not consulted beforehand who's, who would be ready to join uh, such a committee. The committee would entail uh, a readiness, membership in that committee, readiness to attend two or three meetings perhaps a year, uh, but mostly contact will be held through, the, uh, uh, through emails. Uh, and uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, in that sense, uh, uh, some ready, uh, indicate uh, their readiness also to travel uh, uh, to some a few meetings. And uh, the people that I have uh, talked with and who have given the, uh, 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 indicated their readiness to be uh, uh, on this uh, committee are Vasu Gondon from South Africa, and he was he should have been here. Uh, as a speaker uh, in this morning session, but uh, he was struck down by a virus infection and the doctor ordered uh, him not to travel. But he is a, a person, I believe that many of you will know him, he is uh, the founder and director of the South African NGO Accord, which is very similar to the uh, President Ahtisari's CMI here in uh, Finland has uh, just been a close partner for uh, many international organizations. And uh, I personally have known Vasugonden for uh, quite some time, and he was also uh, uh, helped arrange meetings with historians uh, in uh, South Africa uh, when I visited uh, the country last time in October. And he has been very keen on this, uh, uh, on this uh, initiative. Secondly, uh, we have uh, Christina Toomey uh, from Australia, uh, who, has, uh, 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 who has already at this meeting taken the floor. Uh, and we have Sergei Suraliev from uh, Russia, who yesterday was a uh, speaker at the, one of the uh, workshops, and he is ready to take on board this. Then we uh, have Jan Behrens uh, from Germany, who was yesterday uh, one of the speakers at the panel. He unfortunately had to uh, go back uh, before this uh, session, but he is uh, ready, to, if uh, elected, to serve on, on this committee. Uh, and then we have uh, Carl Bildt, who is the former foreign minister of Sweden. He was also uh, coming to this conference but uh, had at the last time, uh, because of um, engagements in Ukraine, to go, but he has specifically said that if we want, he can be on, on board. He's not a professional historian, but I have known him for years. And by the way, we come from opposite side of the political spectrum, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not proposing anyone uh, on that basis. Uh, but he has a keen interest in history, and I have worked together with him in arranging historical uh, discussions and seminars both in Finland and in Sweden. Uh, and he has a tremendous uh, network of uh, contacts internationally, so, which uh, would be very useful for us. And finally, I also received today uh, the 
uh, indication uh, and promise that Margaret Macmillan uh, is ready to serve on this uh, committee. She had to leave uh, to the airport, so she's not here with us, but I'm very happy that she, she gave her agreement. So, and the Historians Without Borders in Finland has proposed that I should also be uh, uh, on the committee, and I'm ready uh, to serve there. So we have six names. Uh, and uh, uh, I would also propose, unless there are other proposals, that we uh, uh, give uh, the, uh, this uh, uh, committee uh, the right to uh, co-opt two or three further members, t bearing in mind that uh, the committee should be uh, representative geographically, more representative geographically, and also with a uh, better gender balance. So uh, these are the names that uh, uh, have the people who have uh, allowed their names to be uh, put forward, and I would be uh, proposing that uh, we uh, nominate these to uh, this international. Uh, coordinating committee. And when we have the next meeting, or the first meeting actually of the network sometime uh, within a year or so, uh, then there will be a new, obviously, uh, a new opportunity to uh, uh, see how we want to organize and, and who should be uh, in the lead. Any proposals? If not, I assume that these six people can be nominated with the International Committee and also given the uh, right to co-op two to, to three more members, bearing in mind the geographical and gender representation uh, needs. Please. Yes, uh, just, yeah, just a quick uh, maybe proposal or, or maybe observation. I'm the ambassador of Morocco. I, in terms of uh, representativity, uh, I think one, one dot is meeting, and that's the MENA region. So um, I don't know if this particular part of the world have been, or historians there have been approached, or is there uh, an open door also for membership from this part? The membership is open, and then signature is to anyone, everywhere. This is universal. Uh, and we have did send out a few invitations uh, to uh, people we got the uh, contacts for to this conference and we have some I believe also from them but actually I will mention that I have the opportunity uh, in the next week to uh, uh, be uh, meet at the Helsinki uh, what's the name of the purpose but there is a international meeting uh, uh, here in Helsinki with uh, uh, people from particularly from the Middle East uh, uh, arranged by the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, and I have been invited also to that meeting, which I will use, and I've also been uh, asked to make a presentation of historians without borders. Uh, so I would, and I hope that that would create more interest in the, uh, from the Middle East. And surely if you have any uh, proposals uh, later on, please let us know, so that uh, we could also look uh, to see if there is someone we could invite uh, to join the committee uh, from that region. Please. I saw a hand somewhere, but... Ah, yes, please. Did you? Over there. If it is uh, possible, but sure, I should ask them. There is a wonderful uh, colloque together this uh, morning. They made a wonderful uh, contribution historians without border. If it is possible, I would like to offer their name, but I don't know if they accept or you and uh, Baskin. I, I, yes. Well, the floor is open, but, but unless there are concrete proposals, I think that the proposal of these six names plus the uh, possibility to co-op two or three more can be adopted. Yes, thank you. And now that actually leaves us uh, with the next item, which is conclusion of the conference. 
I have not prepared any concluding uh, speeches. I think that uh, all that we have heard and all that we have discussed during these two days has been very important and very useful and given us a lot of food for thought on how to take forward this initiative. And I would say that one item uh, which I personally uh, take on board is that perhaps we have taken too much for granted that historians uh, uh, are not the problem, that we are referring historians as a large body uh, in service of mediation, conflict resolution, etc. But I recognize from some of the interventions and discussions that there is a lot that we need to do among historians, between historians, before we are all, uh, necessarily ready uh, to act uh, uh, for uh, others as well. And <clears throat> but the main thing I want to ask all of you is please remain engaged, Please come forward with ideas, proposals. We will distribute them to all uh, in the network. Uh, and uh, uh, as signatories uh, to this declaration, uh, you may use on a personal way, since uh, uh, our logo, Historians Without Borders, but it is not for uh, misuse. So only if you, when you are a member of that, you can, of course, indicate that you by, by use of the uh, logo as well. And finally, uh, you are all invited tonight uh, at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, to restaurant Kaisa, which is the oldest restaurant in Finland, quite close, and you have Kaisa Niemi, uh, uh, which is the elder, uh, which is quite close, and uh, you will find the uh, uh, map uh, in the invitation. Uh, and all of you, and by the way, all of your friends, spouses, etc., you wish to take with you. It's a very informal occasion. Uh, all of the people who have uh, been working for this conference uh, uh, will be there, and I'm very much want to uh, thank. In particular, a few people, because uh, most of this work has been done by uh, volunteers. But I would like to uh, present three people who have been employed uh, 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 in, by us uh, for the conference. Jenny Lakso, our Secretary General. <clears throat> Theo Komet, uh, uh, beside him, our, our assistant uh, uh, for this conference. And uh, Kaisa Lara, is she, is she here? Yes, who is the press secretary for the uh, conference. And I think I would also want to have an, an applause for Emma Hakala, the secretary of our organization, a member of our board, uh, who without any remuneration has been, I would say, working full time, if not more, uh, for this conference. <laughs> So, uh, thank you all, and uh, we will hopefully have a fine evening uh, in this fine uh, summer weather, exceptional in Finland, so take full use of it uh, tonight. Thank you.